Hello. So you remember a couple of weeks ago when I started talking about Demolicious kind of changing their format, not changing their format, but kind of introducing a new format that not only would you get a monthly Demolicious that pitted startup against startup against former champion trying to take away the Demolicious title and, and winning the Demolicious belt, even though they didn't get to keep it. That's the standard format. The new upcoming format for the end of the year in December, December 10th, is the Champion of Champions battle, which means everybody who was a champion before goes against one another to see who the ultimate Demolicious Champion is in town for 2024. And they do get to take the belt home. I confirmed that with the organizer, Josh Carter. Now, this will be at a big venue. This will be at the Mission, the McMinniman's Mission in Northwest Portland. So uh, plenty of room for you to show up and watch that competition. You should definitely go. I've already RSVP'd. I look forward to seeing you there. But all that being said, that got me to thinking, sure, there are all these people who've won Demolicious. There are going to be a few more months worth of winners with Demolicious, but I was curious how many startups has Demolicious introduced us to to date. So through June, not counting the July event, which is upcoming because you haven't really met those startups yet, but you know, how many Portland startups have we encountered through Demolicious? And it turns out we've met 40 Portland startups so far with probably, you know, 30 maybe another 40 to come before the champion of champions competition. I just thought that was super interesting that there have already been 40 companies that have taken the demolicious stage, attempting to take the demolicious belt. And, uh, and we, you know, we're going to get maybe almost that many before the December competition. So here's what I wanted to do because you might not have had the, the opportunity to attend every Demolicious, or you might have forgotten a few of the companies, I'm going to let you know who all 40 companies were who've taken the Demolicious stage thus far. I'm going to have to read them off. Obviously, I do not have them memorized, but I'm just, I, am, I want you to know that there are these amazing 40 companies that had the guts to get up and pitch, and so you should know about their startups. Okay? Are you ready? Cool. Let's go. Ada Analytics, Airbuild, Winner, Beach Necessities, Bobify, Body Fuel, Canvas AI, Cascadia Carbon, Celestic Communications, Co-Resonate, Demo Gorilla, Detox, Winner, Eco Badlands, Winner, Epicurate, Evergreen Inc., Fan Wagon, Winner, Fireproof, Five Bags, Flat, Winner, Flow, Frontend.dev, Gentleman's Union, Goddess Moose, Green Canary Software, Henna, Inverse AI, oops, sorry, Innerverse AI, Just Send It, Karma Plus, Kick Plan, Winner, Lithy, Marrow, Perfect Memory AI, Puddle Town Chess, Remembrance, SideQuest Escape Games, Presents Disaster Park, Cascadia, Smile Solution, Social Director, Sturdy, Talent Llama, Tolly, and finally Wingman. So those are the 40 startups as well as the winners. Again, the winners that will be competing so far at the Champion of Champions competition will be Airbuild, Detox, Eco Badlands, Fanwagon, Flat, Kick Plan. Cool. So looking forward to that. And of course, they'll be in Demolicious coming up in July. I will share more about that as it approaches. I believe we still got a couple weeks, but if you want to go ahead and RSVP, you are more than welcome to do that ahead of time. Speaking of competing as a startup, there are three startup applications that are coming up, and I'll share those toward the end of the episode so that you, you know, you don't forget about them as I go through all of this other stuff. The next thing I want to touch on is a great piece by Mike Thielen that was written uh, and published this week talking about like what makes Portland tick. And I thought it was just a really insightful piece. If you're not familiar with Mike, he used to run the event called Feast, which brought all the food community together here in Portland on an annual basis for a really compelling event. And now he not only continues to work in the food industry, but is also trying to help reinvigorate 
Portland, and part of that reinvigoration is through some of the writing he's doing. And he's doing a series of pieces just on his thoughts on Portland. I highly recommend that you take the opportunity to subscribe to Mike Thielen's Substack so that you can stay in the loop on that writing about Portland and, and other interesting stuff he has to say. I read this piece, thought it was really great. I shared it, read it a few more times. And, and the thing that dawned on me that wasn't said explicitly, but is just kind of implicitly part of these, these writings that Mike is publishing is he's owning the narrative about Portland. And that is something that I think traditionally Portland has been very weak or incredibly poor at doing, at owning the narrative. I think for the most part, culturally, you know, we're aggressively humble. We don't brag a lot. We don't put on airs or try and, and make people think that Portland is a great place. We just act. We don't talk about it. We do things and we do really creative things and really amazing things, but we don't brag about those things. Through that aggressive humility, through that unwillingness to put ourselves out there and kind of brag about Portland or about the things that happen in Portland, we're really abdicating that narrative to other people who want to pick it up or to other publications that want to pick it up, which is all well and good when things are great around here, when you see the New York Times writing us up every other week, or when you have a sketch comedy show based on how quirky your community is. Like those, those are good things when people take those storylines and run with them. But what's happened now recently is because we are not owning and controlling, not controlling, because we're not owning and, and taking responsibility for that narrative, we've had all this negative news that, that's come out. And we, we really have a hard time impacting that or derailing that because somebody else owns that Portland narrative and continues to pump that Portland narrative. But I think there's somewhere that, that's a happy medium that, that Mike is starting to touch on, which is owning that narrative and being confident about how amazing Portland is without being overbearing. So all that being said, I would like you to think about what you can do. Again, not to be bragging, not to be egotistical, but just being proud of what you're doing, what you're doing in Portland, and how you can help not only tell your story, but amplify the stories of others in Portland who are doing that very same thing. I think another really good example of this owning the narrative is what the what the folks at Chaos Town have done. And I've talked about Chaos Town in the past. They had a great series of, you know, really insightful, almost mini documentaries of, of people and, and events in the Portland area that, that were super interesting. And um, if you haven't had a chance to watch the Chaos Town work of season one, please go do that right now. I'll link it up. But they have done a really good job of saying, we're tired of the negative narrative. We're going to own the narrative and we're going to show you the Portland we want you to see. So again, Mike Thielen, Chaos Town, I'm looking for others. So if you feel like you're doing a good job of advancing a positive narrative about what's happening in Portland, just let me know. Comment below, reach out to me. I would love to highlight the work you're doing because the more people telling the real stories of what's happening here in Portland, the better off we'll all be. Okay. And thanks to Mike and the folks at Chaos Town for doing the work that they do. I look forward to much, much more from both of them. You've got a lot on your plate. You can't be expected to remember all this stuff. Just go ahead and subscribe and I'll send you news every single week. So I, I don't know if you've picked up on this, but AI is apparently a thing and the uh, <laughs> everything's AI these days. But one thing that has been happening is this kind of this kind of misconception that in order to be doing anything interesting with AI, it has to be a startup or it has to be a product or it has to be whatever, which is why I'm really happy to see this new event called AI Tinkerers, AI Tinkererers, that is really designed for people who are still just mucking around 
with AI. Maybe there's no product idea there. Maybe they're just working with a large language model. Maybe they've been doing something interesting with machine learning. Maybe they have interesting data sets that they're looking to use to train an LLM. Maybe they've come up with some wacky concept that they use AI to, to help manage that. Whatever the case, there's no product or market or, or, or anything like that maybe in place yet, yet they still need somewhere to show and share those ideas. And that is what AI tinkerers is for. So if you're an AI tinkerer and you would like to show what you're tinkering with to other AI tinkerers, make sure an RSVP for the very first AI tinkerer gathering. It'll be happening July 23rd. I'll link that up so that you can grab a seat. And uh, even, even in the short term, like the people who are involved in it, I'm sure it's going to be a really compelling event. So if you have any interest in AI whatsoever, I highly suggest you mark your calendar for July 23rd and make sure an RSVP for that event. Speaking of events, uh, not everybody can make the evening events, you know, lots of events happening in the evenings, but some people are like, look, I wish there was just a time like a coffee break kind of meeting I could attend, maybe grab some coffee, chat with some other founders, that would be really compelling to me. Well, get ready to be happy because that's exactly what Founder Coffee is for. Founder.coffee, well, it usually takes place from 9 a.m. random places around town. There's a Founder Coffee Bend now as well, which is super interesting. But the next Founder Coffee takes place July 16th at Insomnia Coffee at Cedar Mill. Make sure and go ahead and RSVP for that. But again, if you're a founder and you're looking to hang out with other founders, but you can't make evening events, this is a great opportunity for you to still engage with your peers at a different time of day. And again, with a stimulant instead of a depressant. So uh, if that sounds like it's interesting to you, please RSVP to the upcoming Founder Coffee or put your name on the list for future events so that you hear when they're being planned and when they're happening. And if you're in Bend, make sure and sign up as well so that you'll know when the next Bend Founder Coffee is. Again, caveat, founder in this regard means somebody who's building a product-based business. So if you have clients, you charge by the hour, you're an agency or a services-based business, what have you, this isn't really the gathering for you. This is more for people who are building products and are founders of startups. So just wanted to make sure that you understood that caveat as well. All right. I promised you three applications. So three startup applications that may apply to you for competitions or, you know, selection processes. Two are pretty wide ranging. One is pretty specific, but let's go ahead and go through them. First and foremost, I want to remind you that the Latino Founder Accelerator, their applications close July 14th. If you're a Latino, Latina founder of a startup, they're agnostic as to what type of company that is. So it can be all across the board. You can be building products or doing services. It can be technology. It can be consumer products, whatever. If you're a Latin founder, please consider submitting an application to get access to the peer support and mentorship and, and all the other good things that come with the Latino Founder Accelerator. But get that application in this weekend because it's due. So get that in. Uh, the other one I wanted to remind you of, Bend Venture Conference, the annual largest angel conference in the Pacific Northwest. Applications are open for companies to submit to be on stage there. So if you are a venture fundable business and you would like to stand up on stage in front of angels from throughout the Pacific Northwest, up and down the West Coast, people come from all over. If you would like to be in Bend in October, standing on stage telling people about your startup, get your application in. Applications stay open for a while on this one, but I highly encourage you to start working on your application sooner rather than later. And then the final one, this is a national, international, really contest is a is a startup contest called south by southwest pitch 
Now, if you're not familiar with South by Southwest, it's an annual event that occurs down in Austin, Texas. It originally started out as a music festival. Then it expanded to have all kinds of things, movies and tech startups and education and all that kind of thing. South by Southwest Pitch is really focused on giving early stage startups a stage in front of not only that massive audience that South by Southwest attracts, but also in front of very influential people in the startup scene. So if you are interested in being on stage down in Austin in March, I highly encourage you to start working on your South by Southwest Pitch application. There is a fee but if you are selected to pitch, it gets you one of those quite pricey South by Southwest tickets for free. And of course, if not that this would happen to you, but if you're not selected, you get a discount on the tickets because of your fee. So uh, I've been involved with this program for more than a decade. I've served as a, as a judge and an advisor to the program. I've been amazed by the the quality of startups that continually come through the amazing ideas and companies that people are building as part of south by southwest pitch so if you want to take an international stage and gain the exposure that only something like a south by southwest can bring you i highly encourage you to submit your application and please tell them i sent you their way and I probably won't help you win, but at least they'll know that you heard about it from me. And if there's any questions I can answer for you about the South by Southwest pitch competition, please don't hesitate to either drop something in the comments or reach out to me. If I get enough questions, you know, I might just do a special episode on South by Southwest pitch to help ensure that your questions are answered and that you feel comfortable uh, providing an application for that program. Because as I said, I'm I'm a fan. I've been really humbled to be part of it for as long as I have, and I'm um, really hoping to see your company on stage down at South by Southwest Pitch. All right, so that's it. We made it through the heat wave this week. You've got a bunch of applications to get ready for. You just met 40 new startups, which is kind of crazy, and you probably knew a few of them, if not a lot of them, but maybe I introduced you to some new startups as well so that you want to check out. Hope you're doing okay. Hang in there, and until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. Look, you've already spent this long procrastinating. Why not spend a little more time watching this video, too?